When you're walking down the street um, and you see cops, like what, I guess, are the thoughts that go through your mind? What's happening in your body? Well, for me, unless I have a direct confrontation with the police, police are invisible to me. I mean, I don't see them. They don't harass me. I see the police, except if I'm on a bicycle. <laughs> and now the police are after everybody on a bicycle. So if you're on a sidewalk with a bicycle, if you don't have... A neighborhoods. There's, there's, an interest, there's, there's an interesting... I'm sorry to cut you off, but there's a... I, I don't have it with me, but... Um, the statistic in terms of the amount, amount of substances given for riding on the sidewalk and they compared bed side to Park Slope. It was so minuscule in Park Slope, so minuscule amount of uh, stops that they had, some they could, police gave out for bike, riding bikes on the sidewalk compared to like Bed Stuy and other neighborhoods. I guess because people in Park Slope don't ride bikes. I guess that's why, right? But um, I, mean, I just wanted to throw that out there. Um, but I think in terms, if I can like answer the question in terms of like how I personally feel about it. So I always, I worked, walk this bounce and I even write about it too, where like, so I'm somebody, you know, formerly incarcerated, spent a lot of time in jail, et cetera. Um, and, but I'm also somebody who's a professional in the community. I, you know, I do a lot of community work, a lot of community organizing, a lot of anti-gun violence work, a lot of criminal justice reform, a lot of stuff, I'm immigrant act um, rights. Um, and I can be in one moment in a meeting at City Hall and I do it with a, you know, you know, primp and proper with, you know, slacks and a tie on or whatever it is. And I know that when I walk home at night in Best Side, like, it doesn't matter, right? It's a completely different context I'm in. I'm not, even though I'm the same person, I'm not walking differently. I just got on my jeans and a cap on and whatnot. I know that when I see police, I'm not feeling comfortable. I know I'm not feeling calm. I know that I need to, like, tense up a little bit. And I'm not doing anything in my mind. I'm not doing anything illegal, right? I'm doing the opposite. I can only imagine how they feel, particularly as a black person or a brown person in these neighborhoods. Yeah, and one, one thing that you said, Ed, that, that really sort of stuck with me, not only when you were saying it, but even at, through Marlon talking and my own experience, was you saying that you that the police are invisible to you. And that, like, I, will, I felt blown away because I feel like, I don't know that the police have ever been invisible to me growing up at East Flatbush. You know, I feel like... Um, Maybe when I was little, like there was a time that, that I looked up to police as children do because they find before, as black children do before we find out about police brutality. Um, and, the, I, and now if I'm walking down the street and I see cops in a patrol car or physically standing on the sidewalk, I know that my body immediately sort of gets tense. And you know, like, I know I'm not committing any crimes. I know that I'm just minding my own business, I, you know, but the, simply the presence of police challenges my feelings of safety. It challenges my feeling of freedom. You know, it challenges even my ideas about what I'm doing. Like, oh, I should make sure I keep my hands out of my pockets, you know, whatever it is. Like, how do I make sure that I look less like a criminal even though I'm not doing anything criminal? Um, and I would, I don't know what I would give up for that luxury of having cops be invisible. Um, but I do know that there's, there is, there has to be some kind of big privilege when you have um, a portion of a gentrifying neighborhood they may feel like cops are invisible and another portion who feels like the presence of cops is challenging to your very being.